magic win! The magic win, baby! Cue the music! Woo! The magic defeat the Boston Celtics 113 to 96. Woohoo! The Moritz Wagner game, ladies and gentlemen! Yes, Moritz! Oh, we love him so much! Thank you, the Deutschland! Yes, Moritz! I mean, what what a game from Moritz Wagner. The Moritz Wagner re revenge game. That he got cut by the Celtics and comes out with 27 points, three boards, nine of 13 from the floor. I mean, he's he he's the he's doing it all. All right, he's doing it all off the bench. It's it's crazy, man. He's drawing charges. He's filling empty space, cutting to the hoop. Um, he's getting to the line. I think he shot more free throws than any other player on our team. I mean, that's not normal. Nine free throw attempts. He went eight for nine from the field. He had 13 points of those 27 in the fourth quarter to put it away. Oh, man. Moritz Wagner, sir. Round of applause to you. What a game. What a game. Wow. Wow. Got to give a shout out to him. I'm I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, but this is going to be an interesting decision for when, you know, Wendell Carter comes back. I'll talk about it right now. I'm just talking about it right now. My name is Kyle. What's up, Court Cousins, everyone? Good to see you, Second Cousins. Hope you're feeling as good as I am. I watched this game with my buddies, and I had to rewatch it because we were saucing, enjoying the birthday festivities. But as I was saying, Moritz playing so damn well and Goga playing well, man. This is going to be interesting when uh, Wendell comes back. I mean, he's the starting center, no question. But dang, you know, Goga and Moritz are they're they're still they're arguing for minutes right now. I mean, Moritz was getting the backup five minutes, so I don't think that changes. But is Goga going away all the way because he did some nice things as well, and he's been playing really solidly. So I mean, I've been very critical of the the depth at five, and Moritz Wagner says, Kyle. I've been listening to the Court Cousins podcast. And what you're saying is nonsense, young man. And you need to cut it out. You stop it right now. You stop it. So I will. I'm sorry, Mortz. I didn't mean to. Woo! It's good to see that man cooking. Another great narrative out of this one. Cole Anthony with the father calling the game on the sideline. Come on. If that doesn't pull on your heartstrings, I don't know what does. Maybe the Franz Wagner alley-oop. That thing was monstrous to Cole Anthony throwing it down on an and one. You kidding me? You kidding me, Cole Anthony? Wish you could have done that one in the dunk contest. That probably would have won. Uh, all right. So he had what? 16 points, six assists, plus 17 if Peach were here, that would be the plus-minus player of the game. He was tied with Jonathan Isaac for the best plus-minus on the team. Oh, man, speaking of Jonathan Isaac, anyone else's freaking lungs give out when he was down on the floor for, you know, 30 seconds there? Whew. Whew. Don't do that to us, homie. Don't do that to us. Where are we going next? So those two good things, I want to talk about a not-so-good thing. I'm watching the game this morning with my wife. She says, oh, he's hot. Who the fuck? Who are you talking about? Joe Missoula. She, she thinks Joe Missoula's hot. Okay. You know, I can appreciate a handsome man. All right. Not, not, my, not my style. Not my type. Okay. Joe Missoula is not my type. But I guess, you know, I, I would really be worried if it was still in my Odoka. Damn it. That was supposed to be the boom. That was a good M.A. Adoka joke. Got to keep it moving now. <laughs> uh, to start the game, I liked what I saw. You know, Franz, Paulo, Jalen, everyone was aggressive to the hoop. Our team, it, that, I mean, that's the calling card, right? We're, we're tremendous at putting the pressure on the hoop. That's what we do. We live in the paint. And so let's look at some of these team stats. Uh, points in the paint, 60 to 40. Our way. Let's go, baby. We shot nine more shots than they did in this game. Um, 11 from 28 from beyond the arc. There were seven for nine, uh, 29. Uh, rebounds, we won the boards, crushed them on the boards, 48 to 31. You know, they'll cry foul and say, oh, it's because Kristaps Porzingis went out in the third. Guess what? Guess what, Celtics fans? 
We're missing our starting center, too, so we have no sympathy for you. We're the most injured team over the past three years. There's no excuses. There's no excuses, but we will talk about some of the excuses that these uh, these Celtics commentators wanted to make in just a little bit. Uh, we're moving the rock, 23 assists. Turnovers were an issue early. Turnovers were an issue early. Um, we did not see shots fall in that first. We shot 38% uh, percent from the field in the first with eight turnovers. That gave the Celtics uh, 13 points off those turnovers. And I think we were down by 12 at the end of the first or something like that. So, you know, and Jalen Brown was on one. He was on one. He had 12 points in the first quarter. Between him and our turnovers, that was where our deficit came from. Because, I mean, Jalen Brown, he, he's, a great, he's a great player himself. He was shooting the ball well. He had that crazy fadeaway behind the backboard shot. That was nice. That was nice. You got to give credit where credit is due. And then, what's next here? We're going to seven, Kyle. So after a hot start from the Seas... You know, good first half. I think we're down. We were down 12 there early in the third because they came out. Kristaps hit a couple shots. They extended the lead. They're up by 12 now. But no, 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 no. This team, this Orlando Magic team does not give up. We know this. Even from last year, these guys play to the end. That's why they always have a chance. They go on a 17-0 to run in the third. Until the ref gives Derek White a little ticky tack foul, he gets to the line, stops the bleeding. Nah, 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 nah. I was thinking about this. So in our era of sensitivity and things, and every you know we got to be correct about this stuff. Can I, as a white man, wear a Derek White jersey, or is that problematic? Karen, Karen, is it problematic? She says no, as long as I go with a friend with a Jalen Brown jersey. <laughs> it's a joke. Stop being so sensitive. All right, what else do we got? <laughs> you come for the magic, you stay for the jokes. This is when, at, during that 17-0 run, is when you start getting all the excuses. Scalabrini, my ginger brethren over on the sideline, but I hate to say it, he's, I mean, he's a homer, the white mamba silliness. He says, you know, he's giving out lines like, oh, this is a good team, but this is like their Super Bowl. No, 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 no. Now, talk to your boy Eddie House, okay? We're owning the Celtics right now. Past few years, four in a row victories, I, I think, against the Celtics. This is not our Super Bowl. This is every day. We do this all the time. This is like taking the dog for a walk, all right? This is regular for us. This is just, this is just it. So don't come with this is their Super Bowl. We played the champions. I don't know. You didn't make it to the finals last year, but we played the team that won the finals last year, and we beat them too. So, hmm, hmm, Mr. Scalabrini. We will, we will play you like the Super Bowl in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. I would love that. Please give that to me. Basketball gods, please give that to me. Us playing the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals and whooping that ass. That would be wow, wow. And oh my gosh, as someone who's in New England and, and went to college in Boston and lived there for a couple of years after, the Duncan cam, dude, the Duncan replay cam, you kidding me, dude? Oh, I fucking love it. Oh, wicked. Just love seeing some Duncan. You know how I drink my coffee? With Celtics fans' tears. That's all I need. No cream, no sugar, just the tears of sad Celtics fans. Leaving the game early. Oh. <laughs> and that's why we do need to shout out the Magic fans. This is from the Six Man Show. The vibes after the Celtics were at an all-time high. I saw videos of Celtics fans leaving the arena. The one guy waving at the Celtics fans. Fantastic. So shout out to you all. If you're in the Florida area and you got down to the arena, you're a real hero. You deserve... A round of applause. Well done. Because it's games like this where, you know, these these are storied franchises. The, the Celtics have been around forever. We're just in our, you know, 35th year. So we're, we're new kids on the block compared to the Celtics. They got more fans. Add that to the retirees going down to Florida. You know there's going to be Celtics fans in the arena, but we fought back. I'm proud of each and every one of you that were there. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
you know, it was a battle, not only on the court, but in the stands. Fans coming back, like constantly cheering on the team, not letting Celtics fans get any traction there. That was freaking awesome. Shout out to you all. Let's see. I'm hitting all my points. What what else do you what do you think? What am I missing? What were your key takeaways from this game? What stood out to you? Maybe it was comical. Maybe it was something that actually has to do with basketball. You can let us know in the comments. And please, if you if you're watching this and you you've watched a few and you haven't subscribed yet, we're like 10 subscribers away from 1500. That's a cool milestone. You can help us get there. So thank you for all that, the liking, the subscribing, the sharing, all that jazz. Much appreciated it. Um, let's see. So another thing that I wanted to talk about now is this play in tourney thing. All right. We're in the midst of this. It didn't look good to start with that uh, that loss to Brooklyn. But since then, we have really come out. I think we're – oh, man, I don't have our plus minus right now in front of me. Let me see if I can bring that up. But this post is from Orlando Magic Daily, Philip at Orlando Magic Daily. And he's explaining how we can win um, Group C. So the way that we can, that Magic win Group C is if Brooklyn loses, so we got to root against Brooklyn, or Brooklyn wins by fewer than 14 and Boston wins by fewer than 23. Um, so, you know, that shows you that – I'm still trying to look up our, our plus minus here, but we'll see if that works um, – yeah, we're we're ahead of these teams by some points. So even if they both win, they need to be decisive victories because yeah, I think this is the PD where we're plus twenty two right now. We're plus twenty two. So yeah, that they, they got some some catching up to do in terms of the points. And hey, it look you know, this is good. This we're pretty damn close to getting to the the next round, which will be in Vegas. So hey. I know this is not, you know, the the biggest deal to a lot of NBA fans out there. I'm going to talk to Peach about it when we record on Sunday tomorrow, and I'm sure he's going to be like, I don't give a shit. Okay, got it. But hey, we've got a young team here, and as much as Scalabrini wants to say this was our Super Bowl, no, it wasn't, but the Celtics should have treated it a little bit more high stakes than than they did perhaps. Like there the intensity is ratcheted up a little bit for these in-season tournament games, and it will be even more so once it gets to Vegas. Once it becomes really real and those teams are now vying for a chance at this first inaugural trophy, hey, it becomes real. And why not us? Why not now, ladies and gentlemen? Because hey, we're we're just beat the two two of the best teams in the NBA, and we're on one right now. And we're on one right now. And looking at the next few games, this post was from Let's Talk Magic on Twitter. He said the next games we got, next seven, versus Charlotte, versus Washington, versus Washington at Brooklyn, which your boy will be at, um, versus Cleveland, at Boston, at Boston. So those are the next seven. What do you think this win streak looks like now? We're at six in a row. I, I replied, I think, nine to ten. I mean, you got to think we get through the Charlotte and Washington games. You got to be – if you're going to be a solidly a playoff team and we're not trying to mess with the plan anymore – you got to win the t- those games against the inferior teams. All right? Charlotte, yeah, LaMelo Ball, uh, was it Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges. They got some guys who can play, but they're still eh, they're they're not where they should be. And we got to beat them. Washington, they're trying to lose Jordan Poole. I'm sad that I ever sat, thought that we should trade for him. He's making people look stupid. Um, got to win those games. Then at Brooklyn, when your boy is there, you got to win that. So around 10 at least, then it gets a little harder. Cleveland, can you beat Brook, uh, Boston two games in a row? They're going to be pissed after this. I mean, we've got their number, so you got to figure they're going to want to put one on us. But man, oh man, Moritz Wagner, well done, sir. I mean, tremendous, tremendous stuff. It, it's so good now that we have this depth that last year when we had Markel go down and Jalen and Cole, we had no one to fill in. But this year, we've got guys going down and we have capable NBA players coming in to fill those roles and not just fill them, but excel in them and making Coach Mosley's job very difficult when this roster is fully healthy, knock on wood. 
it's it's a good time to be a Magic fan. So come on in, ladies and gentlemen. The water is warm. Let me know how you're feeling, ladies and gentlemen. S- six in a row. Like, comment, subscribe. Love you all, second cousins. We'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody. Peace out, everybody.